Um, so yeah, no, no, I just want, quickly wanted to say thank you for, for joining us today. Um, like I said, my name's Jack Smitty, one of the international recruitment partners for Devon NHS. Um, so I'd just like to take the opportunity to say congratulations for being selected to become uh, a nurse at one of our lovely hospitals in Devon. Um, so just that, you know, before I introduce my colleagues, uh, I would like to inform you that we'll be doing a, a question and answer section at the end of the webinar. Um, so if you have any questions, please send them to us and we'll try to answer as many possible uh, at the end. Um, so yeah, today delighted to be able to introduce Tracy Collins, our clinical lead, uh, who will be speaking later uh, alongside uh, Carly Boyce, uh, our international nursing uh, transition lead. Um, but firstly, I'd like to hand over to Victoria Stone, uh, who is a, another international recruitment partner, uh, who will share with you uh, a short presentation uh, about Devon, um and our six hospitals um so yeah over to you uh victoria bear with me let me get the presentation yeah, sure. up and running i know you're dr you're driving as it as it were oh <laughs> we don't need that <laughs> so good morning everybody i'd just like to take this opportunity to welcome you all uh thank you so much for joining us on this webinar event this morning um as jack uh just mentioned i am um jack and i do the same role i am an international recruitment partner um have, i've probably had contact with uh some of you uh here today so thank you we do appreciate your interest and we are excited um to talk to you about uh everything uh, that Devon has to offer and um, uh, that which our Devon hospitals have to offer in particular. But Devon is a fantastic region of the UK. Um, we are, uh, it, oh, there we are. Thank you, Jack. So this is where we're situated in the southwest of England. Um, we are um, an area that has uh, everything really significant contrasts we have cities we have a beautiful coastline with fantastic beaches making us um, a prime holiday destination um, for uh, people looking to go away from other parts of the UK uh, we have fantastic countryside also with walks moors um, everything everything that's um, to offer for an outdoor um, lifestyle uh, for, for your work-life balance I suppose is a good way to put it. Um, we are accessible though to um, London and we have airports, oh, there is an airport in Exeter, also Bristol is only an hour away and of course London is, is no more than a couple of hours away uh, either by driving or by public transport. So um, we are well uh, linked, I suppose, to other areas of the UK and also to be able to travel to Europe um, and beyond, of course. Um, fantastic area. And that's where we are, that bit in red. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. So we have um, six NHS hospitals uh, within Devon principally or six trusts as we call them. Um, it, when we say trust, if you hear the word hospital trust, it just means hospital in essence. Um, so we have hospitals in uh, Torbay, which is uh, our principally coastal area. Um, Within that, it brings its own uh, flavour of nursing, um, including it has um, uh, lots of people coming in in summer months, for example, uh, or bringing um, their own flavour to um, to uh, the patients coming into our hospital at that time. So it, it can peak and trough, I suppose, is, is a good way to put it. We also have an older um, sort of perhaps resident population than some other areas because people love to retire to where we are. Um, Yes, and then we, we're going into details about each of the hospitals in, in the following slide. So I won't spend too much time going through each one. Oh, look, we've, we, there we are in Plymouth. Um, so yes, University Hospitals Plymouth. So Plymouth is a city destination. Um, it's uh, it's actually on, uh, on a sort of harbour area also. So you've got the benefits of city and also um, you can get out on the water, if I can put it like that. Um, but the hospital itself is, as you can see, a regional specialist teaching hospital. It provides 
comprehensive secondary and tertiary care. Um, uh, trauma, for example, is an area that's covered well within within uh, Plymouth and you know, it is it is a teaching hospital. So it is a principal hospital in in uh, the area. Um, thank you, Jack. So that's one. So on to the Royal Devon and Exeter Hospital, um, sometimes referred to as the RD and E. Um, so this is uh, one, yeah, one of the first NHS Foundation Trusts nationally. Um, uh, it, it is a well-known hospital within the area. So Exeter is also a city location. Um, it is actually what we call the county town. So like a well-known principal town, if you like. Um, for Devon. Um, it's again, I would call it so it is it is a city. It's not overly large, but it does give the benefits of city living if that's something that that you enjoy. Um, and the Royal Devon and Exeter Hospital has a good reputation um, and is known for its, you know, its innovation, high quality, quality of care, etc. Um, so it is a well known and well respected um, hospital within uh, the UK and certainly also within Devon. Torbay and South Devon Hospital, uh, so based on the coast. So this is um, the area that has the uh, the peaks and troughs. So lots of holiday makers coming in in the summer um, and then um, its standing population. Um, it tends to be uh, made up of um, not only the people that you see on this call, but also um, older retired people. It's a very popular um, area for people to retire to because it's so beautiful on the coast. Um, lots of uh, options for uh, getting into the water if that's something you enjoy, uh, some wonderful walks, wonderful beaches. Um, Devon really is a region that has well, everything to offer actually and that's why um, uh, people are so fond of Devon and many people choose to spend uh, their holidays here um, if they're unable to live in, in this area. So finally, North Devon Healthcare. Um, so North Devon is, um, as it's situated, funnily enough, within the north of the county. Um, it's uh, so there's. I mean, Carly will talk about this, and Tracy will talk about this in in more detail later. I'm sure cover cover that what North Devon um, has to offer, but it is uh, there is more. Uh, um, uh, emphasis perhaps on community um, based, uh, a community based approach. Um, North Devon is situated with absolutely fantastic, uh, some of the best beaches in Devon actually. I'm sure that's um, that's okay to say here, not not offending. <laughs> yeah, there is people surf in North Devon, which is absolutely wonderful. It's known for its surfing beaches, really, really stunning. Um, perhaps you could say rural, uh, more countryside um, setting. Um, but really very special. Uh, again, very popular with um, with people with holiday makers for its stunning scenery, fantastic walks um, and North Devon Healthcare Trust, good reputation, caring, community based um, and uh, again, great reputation. We are very lucky within Devon, I have to say with our hospitals. Yeah. So Devon Partnership Trust, so this is our mental health arm, if you like, um, so specialist arm set up to provide uh, services to people with mental health and learning disability needs. So the Devon Partnership Trust, DPT, um, is actually uh, has an offering within the other um, hospitals that we've talked about. So each hospital will have a, a mental health uh, sort of arm and that's where the DPT kicks in. Um, uh, we are obviously interested in nurses that have um, previous mental health experience. If a, if um, uh, a career in mental health nursing is something that uh, they are interested in, um, but also of course uh, mental uh, training in mental health um, nursing might be might be something that um, somebody coming to the UK might want to look at sort of longer term as part of their longer uh, career development. Um, that's very much down to the individual. But um, mental health is um, is an area that has great focus within the uh, within the UK um, and globally, I suppose, with recent events, of course. But um, it is a vital function well considered, well respected, and of course uh, set to expand um, in the coming in the coming years. Really nice people as well. Great to deal with.
Thank you, Victoria, for uh, going through that presentation with you. Um, so, yeah, so what I'd like to do now is hand over uh, to, like I say, one of my colleagues, uh, Tracy, um, who has 30 years nursing experience. Um, so, yeah, she will be able to give you some really good insight. Um, so, yeah, let me uh, pass you over to Tracy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jack, and um, thank you for, for um, uh, saying I've got 30 years nursing experience. That's just released my age. <laughs> so good afternoon, good evening, uh, good morning from the UK. So wherever you are in the world, um, welcome. And it, it's wonderful to be able to, uh, to speak on our first webinar um, as the Devon International Recruitment Team. Um, we're really looking forward to having some regular uh, webinars and opportunities to um, to do some education and um, teaching and training with you and um, to bring you up to date um, of any progress and um, exciting um, opportunities and things that are happening here in Devon. So um, the first thing I'd like to say to you all is uh, congr congratulations. Um, I know uh, from the many years of uh, interviewing and meeting nurses from overseas like yourselves um, of what's a huge commitment um, and brave step that you all take and um, and choose to, to, to make and uh, to actually come here to nurse in the UK and the NHS. I know um, myself, I wouldn't be able to, to make such brave decisions and I think you are all absolutely incredible. And what we're here um, to do is to make this such an exciting opportunity for you to really look after you, to make you feel that you belong here um, in the NHS and in Devon. And that's why we want to, to share all of the opportunities and what's available for you. I know I've met some of you on uh, um, through the interviews, um, so it, it's wonderful to be here today. So I thought I would just um, share with you just um, a little bit about about my background and my nursing career and um, perhaps that would give you a flavour in terms of some of the opportunities that could be available for you. So I've always wanted to be a nurse um, even from the age of five where it was my absolute dream, it was my absolute ambition to be a nurse. I love looking after people um, I'm very proud to be a nurse and my sister, I used to dress her up in, um, in, you know, in her clothes and bath her and put her in bandages and plasters. And I used to dress in my little nurse's uniform, but I was really, really proud um, when the opportunity came uh, for me to start my nurse training in um, as Jack has already said, by 30 years, it was a bit, bit longer than that now in 1988. Um, I uh, had the privilege of uh, undertaking my nurse, student nurse training in London um, and, you know, it, um, it, it stood me, you know, really well in terms of my, my career today. So I specialised in intensive care nursing and uh, from intensive care, I worked and had the opportunity to work in senior nursing positions some of that in different specialities, so in surgery, um, specialist surgery. So um, that was neurology and ear, nose and throat, burns and plastic surgery, uh, ophthalmology. There was lots of different specialities where I was able to progress into senior nursing positions and where I was able to uh, undertake some of those leadership roles where I was able to lead teams of nurses and um, showcase the opportunities and be proud to develop and nurture um, student nurses and junior nurses as they go through their, their career. I also had the opportunity to step into some general management roles, so slightly out of nursing, but it gave me a really broad, all-rounded uh, experience of healthcare where I was able to look at the performance and the business element um, of healthcare. And again, it really helped me to, to broaden my, my um, aspect and my sort of uh, in terms of where I wanted to go in my, my nursing career. Uh, when I moved um, back to Devon, I had a fantastic opportunity as an associate 
director of nursing for surgery, I came back to work at Torbay uh, and I worked in Torbay for uh, eight years in the role as an associate director of nursing. And I was working with a number of matrons, a number of specialities. I loved my role in terms of leadership and being proud to really showcase nursing and to make sure nurses had a voice um, in terms of you know, patient care and safety and quality. From my, uh, during those eight years, I, um, I realised I had the opportunity to lead and develop the international nursing and recruitment strategy for the hospital. And it was during that time that I was able to take a team with me overseas, um, firstly to Europe, so to Rome, Spain, uh, Portugal, and we did a number of campaigns overseas and I, I met hundreds of nurses, interviewed hundreds of nurses and realised what a fantastic people you all are and how the international nurses really have in abundance that care, compassion, which really resonated with me as a nurse, something around those family beliefs and those values. And I knew that by having, you know, in, and giving you nurses the opportunity to come and work here in the, in the NHS would make such a difference to our patient care, safety and quality. The nurses um, that arrived, it, it was it was fabulous. We we've taken lots of photographs and Facebook groups and still have here in Torbay a number of those nurses that were interviewed all those years ago. And from then, we then went further afield and we spent a number of weeks out in the Philippines. And again, we traveled across all of the islands. We interviewed hundreds of nurses. And it was just such an amazing opportunity and privilege to be able to speak um, to so many uh, overseas nurses, to really talk about nursing, to really talk about those opportunities and career opportunities here in the UK. And for me, it was an absolute honour and I felt very humbled to meet so many of you and to be able to give you the opportunity to, um, I, I know what a difference to your lives this makes. And the majority of you are coming over here, traveling thousands of miles away, leaving your families, leaving your babies and loved ones behind, you know, to make that difference for your families back home. So you can send money back home so that they can have an education, so that they can have health care and have a quality of life. And I, 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 I'm absolutely humbled by some of those stories and experiences that um, I've heard along the way. And uh, I, I think it's just I feel privileged to be able to to speak to you all about it. And so from from those early days of international uh, recruitment, I had the opportunity to to step into global nursing where I was able to work with universities, nursing colleges, and again, meet many, um, many nurses overseas and to be able to speak and to be able to do presentations to you all again, to, um, to encourage nurses to come to the NHS. These is what, this is what is available for you and this is what we can offer. And it's just fantastic that so many of you are wanting to come and work in Devon and, um, you know, and, and work at our many hospitals, which, uh, as Victoria mentioned, you know, that they are wonderful. There are city opportunities, there's coastal opportunities, and we have the, the um, uh, Torbay, which is on which is on the coast, and then there's mental health opportunities as well. So, so that's some of my nursing. Um, background and experience and um, I, I'm so excited to be working with Jack and Carly and the team uh, in terms of we, we've recently set up the, the Devon International uh, Nursing um, Team and we are uh, leading the international nursing agenda for all of those hospitals in Devon. It's a really exciting opportunity for us um, and we're thrilled that you know you are our first nurses that we are speaking to today and we are hoping to do many more of these over the coming weeks. 
So when you when you come to the UK and you you choose which hospital um, you want to work in, and we will ensure we do our utmost to make sure um, you come to that hospital because we want you to be happy and to feel belonging and looked after, and so your families can come here too. Um, so you will have uh, lots of support, and I won't I won't talk about that at the moment because Carly will talk to you about the support and the pastoral um, support that will be given to you. But there are many educational opportunities as you progress as a nurse here uh, in Devon. You will be able to, uh, if if you if you choose to go into a leadership role, you are our future leaders of nurses. And so therefore you have the opportunity to progress into junior sister roles, into ward manager roles, into more senior nursing roles. There are many specialist opportunities. So there are theatres, there is the emergency department or A&E, there is intensive care, there is cardiology, there is neurosurgery, as long, uh, along with medical and surgery nursing as well. So there's a huge amount of opportunities and areas for you to be able to work in. And when you, when you come here and you spend time and settle into your areas, you will be able to have the opportunity to apply for other positions in different areas. And we will support you to do that. And Carly, Carly and I over the next few and hopefully a year and beyond, we'll start to work on some of the Nightingale Challenge or Nursing Now uh, opportunities and, um, and ethos, which some of you may have already heard about the Nursing Now, Global Nursing Now uh, campaign and challenge. And we want to look at leadership development and empowerment and how we can build a programme that will help you uh, step into that space as future leaders. Now is the time and ironic through a pandemic that the spotlight and showcase has been on nursing. Nursing has never been more high profile than it is now. And it's our opportunity to really grasp that and nurture that and to make sure nurses have a voice, are able to influence change, are able to influence what's right for nursing and patient care. So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to hand over to my colleague Carly, who is only day two in post. Um, so I'm delighted to have Carly with us and she will be looking after you and doing all of the onboarding and supporting with the pastoral care um, during your transition to, uh, to the UK. So Carly, I'm going to hand over to you. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah, so I'm um, so first of all, I'm really very excited to be here. Um, so my name's Carly Boyce and I'm the transition lead for all of you guys. Um, so if I just talk about my background a little bit, so I've come, I live in North Devon um, and I've worked in North Devon for the last 10 years. And, um, you know, as Tracy was saying, the opportunities I've had in my career, I mean, I qualified as a nurse in 2000. The opportunities that I've had today in the NHS with their full support, I, I, I often pinch myself. I just feel very lucky indeed. Um, and, you know, I'm being funded at the moment by the NHS to complete my master's um, and you will have those opportunities too. So it's a it's a amazing organisation to work for. Um, so as Tracy said, I'm like day two in post at the moment. Um, it feels like it's been a long time coming. I've been so excited about joining the team and working with all of you. So um, I started my uh, career as a as a band five nurse on a acute medical admissions ward and over the years was a ward sister and I've just come from a matron's post and was very lucky in that about four years ago, I was asked to take on the international nurse recruitment as part of my portfolio. Um, had experience of recruiting from Europe. Um, however, this is international recruitment is very different and it was a very steep learning curve to begin with. Um, but um, I've set up that model in North Devon and it was a very successful model. And over the last sort of year during the pandemic, 
you know, I've been very lucky to work clinically with the clinical teams on the wards um, and the international nurses and, you know, the NHS would not survive without our international nurses. You are so fundamental in our teams um, and you will be very well supported in Devon. Devon is just a wonderful place to live. Um, I've lived in Devon most of my life. I've lived in other places, but always come back to Devon in the end. It's a great place to raise children um, and have families and working in the NHS you'll be fully fully supported um, in your career development. So I guess for me um, I'm in a really strong position to support all of you guys during the onboarding um, because I've worked with the interna international nurses on the shop floor and you know during the onboarding process I know there's concerns you know the big concerns that worry everybody and I'm here to support you with all of that so think of me as a bit of a foster auntie during your onboarding and you know we will support you you, you mustn't ever be worried about anything you know I'm only an email away I'm here to ask questions and we will fully support you um, so my main priority at the moment is to look at um, weekly webinars like this so we're still trying to bottom things out at the moment but we'll probably be looking at when the when you're at a cos stage to get your certificate of sponsorship we will start to invite you to our weekly webinars and i'm going to be putting together an education program that will be based on feedback we've had from our organizations and also i'd like your feedback on this too on what you might like covered um, we're going to be looking at things like nursing in the uk um, British culture and then also looking to develop some maybe OSCE virtual training so that by the time you get to the UK you've already warmed up in, a bit in terms of expectations for the OSCEs. Um, I'll also be looking, looking at introducing you virtually to your new clinical teams and your ward sisters. So those initial anxieties have been alleviated before you've even hit UK soil. Um, but obviously I, I want your help with this guys as well, because if you, you know, if you think there's something else that you'd like to be put on, then, you know, I'm absolutely open to suggestions for that. And like I say, you will be fully supported because we want you to come and work in Devon and be as happy in your careers as we are, because we all, we all feel very privileged indeed. Um, so you'll be seeing a lot of me, uh, hopefully at least once a week on these webinars. Um, and as, as the sort of programme develops, um, more things will be added in. But that's it for me, really. Amazing. Thank you, uh, Carly and Tracy, uh, for that information. Uh, I've hopefully it's been really useful to you. Um, so, yeah, I'd just like to make everyone aware that we are running uh, a Q&A uh, in a moment. Um, so please do uh, share any questions um, that you may have uh, or concerns uh, that I can put forward to Tracy, uh, Victoria, myself and Carly to answer. So there should be a Q&A box uh, in your top right hand corner that you can click on. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you've got any questions for us at this stage. Please do ask any questions please don't don't be shy we're, we're here to help and you know i'm sure lots of you have lot, lots of questions or things you would like to like to know so please please do type type them in yeah so we've <laughs> got a couple of questions uh, around causes um, and when to expect them to be issued um, i don't know if, if one of you want to, to come in or, on that or if you want me to answer it Yes, absolutely. Yeah, please do, Jack. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So with uh, sort of the, the causes uh, and deployment, um, we are in talks uh, with our hospitals uh, within Devon um, and, and have been over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we're now getting to the stage where we will be looking to uh, have deployments um, as of next month with some of our uh, sort of hospitals uh, and then we'll be deploying uh, nurses uh, pretty much every month from that. Um, so 
people can start to be expecting to get uh, clauses um, over the next uh, couple of weeks um, and then deployment, uh, like I say, uh, from uh, next month in July uh, onwards. Um, but either myself or Victoria will be in contact um, to discuss that uh, further with you. Um, so hopefully I've covered that off. Um, so I'm just going through the questions here to see what else we've got uh, coming up. There's one there, Jack, around worrying about the ban. So yeah. um, did you want me to, to answer that? So I am. Um, I'm presuming this is around uh, our nurses in India, uh, where the current restriction um, in terms of deployment is. What I will, will say to you is though, so uh, your offer of employment is still honoured and we will honour that. And the NHS is honouring that to all of our nurses in India um, that were sadly unable to, to be deployed to the UK. So you still have your, your offer of employment, absolutely. And as soon as the ban and restrictions are lifted and you're able to travel, we can, can, pro can progress further in terms of your paperwork and your, uh, your issue of certificates of sponsorship. So please don't worry. Um, you know, we, we are very well aware of what is happening um, overseas and it's such a difficult time isn't it for everybody um but you know you your offer is still there and we will honor that uh, all the way through and we will support so when the restrictions are lifted um you know you will come into the uk and um you you will need to quarantine for a period of time sort of at at the London airports where at the moment some of our nurses are having to quarantine there for 10 days um, and uh, some of those nurses who are travelling um, not through red countries but are, are able to come straight into uh, at the hospitals and quarantine um, here. So you're not left alone although you, you some of you may have to be in the hotels in London. Um, we as, uh, as Devon and the trusts at the hospitals will be um, liaising with you every day. You will have your, um, it, it won't be a holiday while you're quarantining. There will be work to do. Your education programme starts um, almost from the first day of you arriving. So um, you are very much looked after. And, you know, when the time comes, you are uh, brought back to Devon to, to the hospitals and you'll have your welcome meetings and uh, and meet your colleagues and teams here. So please, um, please don't worry about the, the bans and the restrictions at the moment. Um, you know, we will support you all the way and you still have a job offer um, here. But as um, just to reiterate around the causes, um, we have over the last week um, received notification from a couple of our hospitals in terms of uh, the numbers of nurses they're able to um, to take in the first cohort. So through to July, through to August, through to September, um, summer from September onwards. And Jack and Victoria uh, will be in contact um, with you all around that. So, you know, hopefully over the next few days and week, you'll be hearing um, some more information in terms of next steps. So that is really good news. I know some of you have waited um, quite some time um, and we, you know, we ourselves have been in regular contact with each hospital. And it's important we make sure that, you know, you, you go to the right hospital that you have chosen and, and your preference. So that is what we've been waiting to hear back from from the hospitals but please rest assured you're you're all here you know you're with us you're in our thoughts and um you know you can you can message the team at any time it's absolutely no problem uh, there's a Nosky question oh. there would you like me to pick that up jack i was literally just about to send put you live then to, uh, to answer that one so yeah if you could talk about the support for the uh sort of oski that'd be brilliant yeah so so just to reassure you um no matter which organisation you are deployed to in Devon, um, they have a fully comprehensive OSCE training and education programme ready and waiting for you. Um, and in addition to that, I'm going to be setting up some OSCE bite-sized training sessions, um, 
possibly through a webinar. Um, I'm not sure which format, but that I want to set that up very soon just to start warming you up in terms of knowing the expectations. And then when I when we know which hospital you're being deployed to, I, I will be sending you their OSCE handbook so you can start learning the checklist because a lot of the OSCE exam information, it's a bit like learning a script. So you've almost got a, it's like you're a bit of an actor or an actress and you've got to learn to say things in the right order. So you will have more OSCE support than you know what to do with. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you very much, uh, Carly, for covering that off. Um, I've noticed a, a couple of people uh, have been asking about how they choose uh, the hospital that they want to join. Um, I don't know if you uh, all remember uh, when you were at interview, uh, one of the uh, questions uh, was which hospital would you prefer? Uh, also, uh, one of the, the latter questions was also about the environment. Would you like to live in a city, uh, in, in a coast or, or countryside? Um, so again, we will look at those uh, two uh, questions um, to work out which hospital would be best for you. Um, but we also look at your sort of uh, experience as a nurse um, as well, um, you know, if that was surgical, uh, medical, um, and also take that into account when putting you into uh, which you know sort of hospital in Devon uh, to give you the the best opportunity uh, sort of going forward as well. Um, so we're looking at all that information uh, to choose the the best one uh, for you. Uh, so yeah, we will obviously be informing you very shortly uh, of, of that. Uh, Jack, I've just noticed there's a, a question here, a couple of questions. Um, one around the vaccine from India before travel to the UK, if I can just answer that. So um, there is no uh, requirement for you to have a vaccine before you you uh, leave India. Um, but if you have the opportunity to have your vaccine, obviously before, um, you know, whilst you're waiting for your certificate of sponsorship, I would hugely encourage you to have uh, to take that opportunity. Um, I, I know that, you know, I've spent a lot of time last year in them. Um, in India with the nursing institutes and universities and I know it, it's just been such a really difficult situation um, out there. My, my heart goes out to all families and, and friends and colleagues um, you know out in India and I think you as nurses are just doing an incredible job um, to, to care in such um, you know difficult circumstances so please if you have the opportunity to have a vaccine before coming to the UK please do take that opportunity and don't don't delay um, you will have a vaccine here for those who haven't, but I'm just thinking in terms of your welfare and protection, please, um, you know, if that is offered to you um, beforehand, please, please do take that. Um, I know there's another question here too as well. Sorry, Jack, just in terms of costs, in terms of quarantine at the airport, please feel rest assured the NHS and the hospitals are fully responsible for all of those quarantine costs. You are not expected to pay for anything uh, at the hotels in terms of those quarantines. So please, um, please feel rest assured that is that responsibility is with us. Tracy, there's probably another question you could answer here. Um, yeah, there's a, a couple of people asking about when they can bring, um, you know, their, their children uh, and family over uh, to the UK. Um, I don't know if you want to discuss what's happened previously with, with other cohorts. Yes, now in um, I probably don't know the detail on on that. I don't know if Carly, you can, but I know um, usually what we what we recommend is there is so there's so much happening in the first three to six months of you arriving in the UK in terms of um, settling into a new country, um, the, the NHS, the new culture. Um, you're learning the OSCE. Uh, you know, there's a big focus in terms of OSCE preparation when you when you first arrive. So in terms of, you know, our recommendation is, is after the six months really to allow you time just to settle into, you know, into this environment because, you know, that it, it is very, very tiring. Um, you know, you're learning the new dialects or, you know, I mean, I know many people say to me, Tracy speaks slowly. Um, so you're, so all of that and all of the information that you're learning and receiving over the next few weeks and months, um, plus the OSCE, 
plus you know the whole new ways of working and shift patterns it is quite tiring and quite difficult those for you know it, it say it's difficult it's it is tough those six months you know it, it's um but after then things start to get a little bit easier and settled and by all means you know you're very welcome to be you know bringing your your families over has that happened to you um carly has that been similar to what what's happened yeah. in north devon yeah, I'd absolutely support what you said. I mean, like you said, on arrival, um, it, it's very busy because you're learning about your new workplace. You're absolutely throwing yourself into your OSCE preparation. You've got a lot of anxiety about your exams coming. So we find that fa um, that our overseas nurses will get their OSCE done and passed, and then they've already started looking for housing or accommodation for the families. And then they bring the families over, say, be month five, month six, and then they're, they've received their PIN, um, all those anxieties are over, and then their families come over. So I would absolutely recommend what you said, Tracy. Thank you. Um, another question that's uh, sort of come in um, is around uh, obviously accommodation. Um, I don't know, Tracy, if you wanted to talk about you know what we would be offering in support of that. In terms of accommodation or Accommoda accommodation. accommodation. So uh, yes. does the hospital provide any uh, accommodation? OK, so um, so we will in, in Devon, we provide uh, two months free accommodation for you. And most of the trusts actually have um, accommodation on site or very close by. Um, so after two months, it doesn't mean to say you have to leave. It's just that you will be continuing then to pay um, the rental costs of that accommodation, which is usually around £400 ish. Um, there may be, it may be slightly more, it may be slightly less, uh, depending on where you work. Um, usually, the um, your your if you are on site, um, we usually uh, ask nurses to then start to look for rental accommodation close by to the hospital. Um, so usually, sort of at about six months, four to six months, and that is just so that we can allow. Um, the new nurses coming into the into the hospitals to actually have, um, you know, some ac accommodation close by. But um, there are you're not expected at two months to just um, go and find your own accommodation. You can if you want to, of course. But, um, you know, it's just after, at month three, you will start to pay, pay for your your room or your accommodation rent. Um, yourselves, I think that there are lots of opportunities around in terms of different accommodation. Um, you know, with each of each of the hospitals and there are uh, accommodation support staff um, at each hospital who will will help sort of guide and signpost. And of course, you know, we each uh, each hospital also has uh, pastoral support leads um, who will work with Carly and, uh, and myself, you know, in terms of, of um, signposting you to agents or people that can that can um, help find alternative accommodation. We find as as you as you start to come together as a group, as a cohort, you know, many nurses like to go and uh, rent a house or flats for, you know, five or six of you all together. So, you know, you can have that um, community and, you know, social gatherings and, you know, well, it's socially distanced, but, you know, meet each other and, and have, uh, you know, nice meals and and things so that's what normally normally happens you know a group of staff um go and uh, move out together amazing thank you very much tracy um another one which could i be to to carly uh, or yourself um someone's asked if you could describe what it's like to work uh in the uh, nhs you know about shift timings durations uh the work environment uh, and also the types of training programs um, that are available e as well. Yeah, I'm happy to pick this one up, Tracy. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. So what I'm going to do based on um, a lot of the sort of questions and things we've had in the chat is during our weekly webinars, I'm going to bring along some of our international nurse colleagues that um, have been through this journey, just like you will. Um, and you can hear straight from the horse's mouth exactly what it's like. I can tell you what it's like to work in a ward or a clinical environment, and I'm happy to do so. But I think we'll bring along some of our colleagues to these webinars um, and they can talk about their experiences. How does that sound? 
That would be okay. good, I think, Carly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Fabulous. Def definitely, that would be a, a, a great idea. Um, I've seen as well a couple of people have been asking for an email address. So what I'll do is I'll make an announcement in a moment with, with the email address to, to contact us. Um, and then what I'll be able to do, um, or one of my colleagues will be able to do, is pass that over to the, the correct person, um, either uh, myself or, or Victoria, uh, if it's you know around recruitment um, or if it's around you know sort of training uh, or other areas over to, to Carly. Um, or Tracy uh, to cover off. So I will do that in a moment. Um, so I'm just going through the question to see if there's anything else there. Um, just notice one asking about the NMC registration and CBT fees refunded. Uh, yes, Devon offer a, a, a one package uh, which is very uh, good um, and will go through uh, a lot of your registrations and, and the fees uh, involved uh, in moving to the UK uh, and to Devon. Um, so we will be sending out um, more details on that uh, once we get to the stage where we're, we're ready to um, supply causes uh, and that will have the full package uh, in there that you'll be uh, receiving uh, once you're, you're in the UK. So we will share more details with you uh, on that one. Um, Jack, I've just noticed there's a nurse saying currently working in the UAE. Contract is going to finish on June the 27th. So I don't need to renew if I get my COS and if I can travel from here in July. It might be just worth trying to, uh, whoever that nurse is, if you could please um, message Victoria or or Jack, that would be great, just so that we can we can actually help you. Yeah, I think potentially I think I know who it is. We were in conversation okay, with yes. them, uh, but yeah. if, if we didn't speak to you yesterday, um, please do reach out to us. Um, just to make sure that we're, we're not missing anybody there. That would be uh, really helpful. Um, so I'm still just going through the question. There's quite a lot. It's that, great that's, to have so through. many questions. Really, right. really good. It, it's amazing and I think yeah especially if we can start doing this uh, on a, a, a weekly basis we'll be able to cover this off uh, with you um, and obviously give you a lot more um, support um, as well. Um, by the looks of it we we have gone through the questions or oh, no, more slowly, slowly coming back in. Um, so yeah, if you've got any other questions please do send them uh, through to us. Um, I don't know if anyone else has got anything to, to say uh, at this stage, uh, Tracy, Carly or, or Victoria. Um, no, no, not really. Just to say, you know, it's been been wonderful to see so many of you uh, on the call and to see the questions that are that have come through. You know, it's um, it, it's great. And, um, you know, I, I love speaking to, you know, to so many nurses and um, it's what I really enjoy uh, i want you to have an amazing time when you come here um you know to really start your your nursing careers here in the uk because who knows where it will take you you know in, in the future and um, and if we can be part of your future nursing um nursing journeys then um then i'm happy um but it, it's great and uh carly we you know we'll there'll, there'll be some weekly webinars um happening which will be really good we will post some um you know anything exciting that's happening um, around Devon? Uh, Jack and Victoria will will their plan is to set up some a Facebook group for for you um, you people so um, you can all start to you know to to get to know each other. But just so we can even put you know photographs of you know things that are happening. There is so much that happens and festivals and I know with during COVID it's obviously you know none of that but there are still some events that are taking place some little activities um, that are happening and you know the restaurants are beginning to open up now and there are some beautiful places to eat and sit and enjoy the countryside and the scenery or the sea um, so you know it's always quite nice to just showcase some of those things and post them on the Facebook page because it just we, we know it's hard when you're waiting to come to the UK so we just want to make sure that you know you're not alone we, we very much want you you know we're, we're, we're here to help you um, every step so no it's been great and uh, look forward to our next um, our next opportunity.
Yeah, and, and hopefully if we if we can get it set up in time, I will see you all next Thursday um, and we'll do some more education and I'll see what I can get organised ready for next Thursday. Um, but yeah, it's just been amazing to have you all on board and you will not regret your decision to come to Devon, I, I promise you. Brilliant, Fabulous. thank you Carly thank you. and Tracy. I, I've just seen one last question uh, come in uh, about uniforms being provided. Uh, yes, uh, we will provide uniforms um, to you, um, so don't worry about that. Uh, everything that, that you need uh, to be able to do uh, your nursing role uh, with all the hospitals, uh, all the equipment, uniform, etc., uh, will be provided to you. Uh, so I have just put uh, an announcement out there with an email address. Um, so please do um, reach out to us uh, via that. Uh, we've got one of our other colleagues, uh, Vicky, who thought she's with us today, uh, that is managing that that email box, uh, and she will send the emails over to the right people. Um, so yeah, once again, just love to say you know thank you uh, and congratulations to, to all of you um, we will send out the presentation earlier uh, which hopefully will show um the videos and we'll have sound on them. I do apologise about the, the technical issue there. Uh, typical uh, that it hasn't gone smoothly. So I do apologise about that. Um, but look, it's our yeah. first live event as well. Yes, Devon, that's so. right. <laughs> that, that's it. So, that's so forgive true. us, forgive us. Oh. But uh, ne next time we'll, we'll make sure uh, when Carly does uh, her uh, webinars that we have got sound if there is any videos. Um, so we'll get on top of that. So yeah, once again, thank you very much uh, for joining us this morning. Uh, it's been great to, to speak to you uh, and see the questions um, that have been you know, sort of coming through. Um, but if we have missed anything, like I say, please email us um, and we'll look forward to, to speaking to you next time. And looking definitely. forward to it, seeing you when you arrive as well, yes. even more so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> great definitely. Stuff. Definitely. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, so yeah, much, we'll, we'll speak to you again soon. Take care. Thank bye you, bye. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Bye.